after October 20th, there will be changes to step one content, literally. It may becoming more basic science oriented. Like step one already was a basic science exam. Now it will be even more basic science exam. And it will focus less on clinical parts and more on mechanisms of drugs. Uh, let me show you uh, the example. 18 year old woman present to her primary care physician with intermittent episodes of shortness of breath that start to bother her last month. Patient is worried because those episodes are waking her from sleep. Patient has a history of eczema since childhood. Our physical exam, uh, on physical exams, uh, normal temperature, normal blood pressure, on lung auscultation with the heard. What is the first line therapy for this patient's condition? Can you please tell me? Yes, it was albuterol, I agree with you, before 2019. So right now, our first line of uh, step one asthma, asthma therapy is combined, short acting bronchodilators and inhalation corticosteroids. Because guidelines changing too fast, like so fast, step one is just like cannot keep up with it guidelines. That is why they are literally deleting all first line, second line, and third line therapy questions. Like literally no more questions like that. That's actually great for second year medical students. That's not so great for MS3s, for MS4s, for graduated physicians like you. Because uh, you are probably more clinically oriented. You are looking at the clinical picture more, not on this basic science stuff. So again, for physicians, for IMGs, it's like a little bit more hard. So yeah, questions will be like that right now. So literally the same question, the same presentation. But look, what is the mechanism of action of the prescribed drug? That's how it will look like. So when you will be asked, uh, and they're also giving you the name of the drug, like Salmetrol. Can you please tell me how Salmetrol works? See, and you're correct. All right, so uh, also, uh, no first line, second line, and third line therapy doesn't mean that you don't need to learn drug names. You still do, you still do need. Uh, because they can ask you something like well, that. Again, the same, the, almost the same presentation, patient with asthma. You prescribed to a patient by the two agonists. What was the drug probably prescribed? That's what they will, can ask you. Again, they don't require you to pick first line, second line, third line of therapy because they just cannot keep up with the changes. But they will want you to know. Yeah, yeah. and what are their mechanisms of action? Can you please pick me something, something right? Hey, very good. And you see, you're correct second time. Yes. So the thing is, you need to pick, right? And see, all be good. So, uh, yeah, that was the first example of the changes. And now the second example. A 20-year-old male uh, presents to her primary care physician with complaints of intermittent abdominal pain and alternating bouts of constipation and diarrhea. His medical chart is not significant for any past medical problems or prior surgeries. He is not prescribed any current medications. Which of the following questions would be the most useful next question in eliciting further history from this patient? Can you please tell me? B, you see? You got it correct. Mm -hmm. Again, you don't need to know, you cannot prepare to all the ethics questions. You need to know like the basic, uh, the basic principles. And from these basic principles, you need to deduct the answer. You just know that you should start with open-ended questions and you are picking the right, yeah? So on step one right now, there will be much more ethics questions, much more. Yeah, so previously, like I, I was telling students all the time, Gert, you assimilate ethics, have you heard about him, by the way? Yeah, YouTube channel. So he, some of his videos are great, some of his videos are so horrible, I cannot just even explain what, uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, so uh, previously I was telling, saying, his Gert, you assimilate ethics, uh, everything that we need for step one ethics and even more. But right now, I'm not sure. So like, as soon as I'll find out, I'll call you and tell you what to, what you need to pick up for ethics. All right, so also the last thing, important things like that you need to know about these changes. 
uh, will the it will will it be scored differently? No, it's still 130 to 100 and, uh, to 280. Uh, it will become pass fail in 2000 in January 2020. So if you take your exam before that date, everything will be fine for you. Uh, will student score change? Yes, but like not so much. It will help more to MS2s, to second year medical students who are more basic science oriented, who know more about these mechanisms. And it will like screw a lot uh, uh, already graduated physicians and MS3s mm -hmm. and MS4s. Uh, because uh, those questions, those clinical questions, like 8% of clinically oriented questions, that they delete MS3s and MS4s and like in physicians, they can answer like easily. But right now it's much more easy will be for MS2s who, who remember me actual mechanisms of the drugs. Uh, and uh, uh, about the practice test scores, right now I don't recommend you to buy any practice tests. Like no practice tests, don't buy any, please. Like uh, uh, yes, uh, only USA one and USA two. Uh, because all the Sanbimi practice scores, practice tests will be irrelevant. At six, more practice tests, six, imagine, six, six one. March 2021. Yeah, so uh, you can say goodbye to our Reddit predictor. We're having a predictor on Reddit. Uh, shout out to this dude who called Big Daddy Aorta. He made this predictor. But right now, his scores will be probably very irrelevant. Yeah, so. All right, so that's actually was it about the October 20th, uh, 20th changes.